the New York Mets play the Atlanta Braves in the first game of a doubleheader. And he hits oh, with Lindor, and Giant takes it inside. He's hit. And McNeil rifles one in the right field, a base hit. A lot of questions. Braves, Mets, bottom of the seventh inning, bases loaded, none out. And Vogelback rounds one on the right side. Olsen gets the out at second. The return throw by Grissom oh. gets by. Lindor scores, and here comes Alonzo. Another run will come in. It's 9-7. to seven. Ooh, I wonder if the Wait. Braves are going to challenge that. He's man. way off the base. Like the job by McNeil. Absolutely good job by McNeil. I love this. The defensive broadcast says, that slide's not good. The offense says, nah, that slide is good. Let's take a look on our end. Second, the return throw by Chris oh. gets by. All right, first and foremost, this is an illegal slide. Second, it is reviewable. And we're going to approach this now from what New York would have done had the Braves challenged it. I have no idea why they didn't, but we're going to try to rework this as if we were in New York replay. We begin where we always do the rule book. 601J sliding to bases on double play attempts. If the runner does not engage in a bona fide slide or initiates or attempts to make contact with the fielder for the purpose of breaking up a double play, they should be called out for interference. Effectively, the other teammate is called out for the prior person's interference. But what does that mean? The throw went awry and the error scores a second run. To assist umpires and teams alike with this, there are four criteria defined to define a bona fide slide. We begin with number one, begins their slide before reaching the base. Replays clearly indicate the runner began the slide physically before reaching the base. That's good. Criterion number two is that the runner is able in attempts to reach the base with a hand or a foot. So let's take another look at that replay, see what we can find. He wasn't anywhere no. near. What ends up happening here is the runner goes out of camera frame, so we cannot conclusively determine, I know, I know what you're going to say, but just stay with me, please, because we're going to talk about criterion number three next. Three is very similar to two. Two is about reaching the base, three is about remaining on the base after completing the slide, but for the same reason, we're going to have to pass over three. Let's go to four. This is the good one. Four is all about sliding within reach of the base without changing one's path to initiate contact. Grounder to the right side could be Oddly enough, the runner does not change his pathway, so that part of the rule isn't violated, but at no time does the runner slide within reach of the base. That means the slide is not bona fide, but even so, the batter runner had to have a realistic chance of being retired. Listen to the Mets here. They had an easy double play with Vogelback running. All I's dotted and T's crossed, we conclude that due to a violation of criterion number four, this is a violation of the slide rule. It's interference. Overturn the no call. Again, not sure why Atlanta didn't challenge, but if they did, R1's out on the force, batter runner out for R1's interference, R2 and R3 have to return to their prior bases, no run score, so Atlanta TV's description was better than New York's. It's definitely not a good slide. If this was college or high school playing under the force play slide rule, it's illegal for a much simpler reason. The runner didn't slide in a direct line between the bases, that's the rule for that level. To the right is significantly outside the protected area, so it's an FPSR violation because the slide wasn't straight, just like me. Thanks for the question. Be sure to subscribe for more. Visit us at CloseCallSports.com, and we'll see you on the site. A generous strike here. Three and one. That's a little, oh, it got the corner. 